Good morning, Sault Ste. Marie. I'm Carla Linden. This is a special report, and it's Thursday with Chris yes. Oldcorn. How are we you? We are halfway through the week. Yeah. Short week this week, four days. Kinda, yeah, yeah. I was going to say halfway. Yeah, that. so <laughs> we've done two shows. We are now doing the third, and then we'll have uh, tomorrow. So yeah. we're halfway. It's and it's week. beautiful yeah. outside. And tomorrow's going to be, what, 25? 25. Do you wanna, oh, do you have the weather for the weekend, actually? Yes, Because I'd do. love to know what I'm going to have to do on Saturday. Yeah, well, today we're going up to 22, oh, which is my. basically the same as yesterday. Perfect. Tomorrow we're going to 25 with a low of 14. And Saturday will be 23 with a low of 13. So it is starting to actually look like we are getting to seasonal temperatures which oh, is that's exciting which is very exciting yes do you have uh, plans for this weekend because it looks like we can make some good plans this weekend yeah we might go up to uh harmony beach oh nice uh, maybe I up there have a little picnic or something I'm gonna go, oh we can do that now too you can yes have we can I'm, actually now i'm gonna take myself like, off to go not have this to weekend. just keep moving all the time you can actually stop and do stuff so oh, that's good well we yeah. have a thank you message remember yesterday we announced that we have the uh thank you up on our uh, our sue online and on our Social media. Yes, for and yeah, to send in your thank you yeah. for your healthcare workers. And we have received one. So I'd love to take this time to read it. It is from thank you to oh sorry, let's just read it. Thank you to Emily. This is from Chelsea Starkle. And thank you to Emily Lento, RPN at Sioux Area Hospital, while upgrading to be an RN online. She is such a hard working person and still makes time for friends and family. And she can quarantine and has been hard on her as her fiance is in BC and she's apart from him through the pandemic. So that's tough. Wow, that's going to be quite a time apart yes. by the time this is all over and you can travel again. It's so difficult being, a, a, I can imagine being a nurse. Our, my neighbor is a nurse and her daughter is staying with her mother. So, you know, she's gone all that time and they kind of just drive by or see each other's in the car and talk through, you know, having their social distance. But yeah, it's difficult, right? I really thought about that. If you have family, what are you going to do? Here's... Yeah. But yeah, logistically speaking, it can be like if you've got young kids and you don't want to yeah. take the chance of bringing it home. No. I know like Airbnb has been doing some things where um, if you have an Airbnb and no one lives in it, yeah. um, Airbnb is actually giving a discount to healthcare oh, that's workers. that's good. That's a great, that's good. Um, so there is, there is different companies doing different things like the RV thing as well that we dealt with, you know, uh, yeah. Maybe a little over a month ago, where oh, you can yeah. stay in RVs RV and stuff like that too. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is a, there is people out there trying to help yeah. so that people are not exposing their families. But in this case, they're across the country yeah. from each other. I so. know that sucks. Well, congratulations um, to Emily on all your success and hard work, and that is a lovely thank you from Chelsea Starkle. So we appreciate that. Now mm -hmm. you sent some rocks last night. Yes, so I did. So after the rock story that we introduced, mm -hmm. you found some. Yes, I was uh, walking through Bellevue Park, yeah. and sure enough, uh, we saw oh, nice. the actual uh, whole, there was qu actually quite a few rocks there now. You need to paint some yeah. and replace them now. There was probably 20 rocks there now. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was fairly big, the, the, uh, yeah, you where guys, it was. Just to remind you, the story by from the yesterday water. was yeah. that, that this yeah. is an initiative that you paint these rocks, you write the messages on them, and the, on, underneath the rock, you write Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Mm -hmm. So you spread them around, and it's supposed to spread joy. It's, just That's like one of those sort of pay it forward things. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what do you have for any updates today? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I interviewed both Luke Dufour and Rick Nero yesterday. Both are counselors here oh, in Sault yeah. Ste. Marie. Yep. Uh, I talk about a bunch of different things with them. Trash, speeding, uh, COVID-19, which what can we kind of expect over the next few weeks and months uh, with things right here in the Sioux. A lot of that obviously is dependent on what the provincial government will allow. Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of the stuff we do here is outdoors, which makes it a little bit easier for Sault Ste. Marie to kind of reach some sort of a new normal yeah. uh, than if you're like in downtown Toronto or something like that, where a lot of stuff takes place indoors. So. Yeah. So did you ask him about Farewell Terrace? <laughs> well, we, we discussed speeding, yes. Yeah. Okay, and, around and that area, there's a, a lot of little, speeding. Yeah, funny little side story. Um, <laughs> I talked about speeding on Wellington Road. Yeah. And last night I was on Wellington Road. Yeah. And I was going over the speed limit you did by a little not. bit, just a little. Um, and I saw this car come in behind me. Oh, I like, thought you were going to say you got to take it. I was going to die. Super fast. Yeah. And just weaved around me and went right by me. Um, my, I had a seven in front of what I was doing. Yeah. And they must have been 120, 130 on oh, Wellington. Oh, nice. And what street? Wellington? Yeah. Yeah. You know where that, uh, the, that Lutheran church is yeah, after yeah. you go past like John Rhodes Arena and the Esso there? Yeah, yeah. 
It was right in front of that church there. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a bend in the road there too, isn't there? Yeah, coming up a little bit after that, but well, yeah, uh, it was. Uh, I was like, wow. Like, here's an example of the exact question I just asked like three, four hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but we have to go to a commercial break. Oh, sorry, we got four minutes to our commercial break. <laughs> Sorry, I misunderstood our producer in our ear. Uh, yeah, and then the other thing I was going to talk about yeah. is house prices. Oh. Um, I've reported on this before a yeah. little bit about uh, the drop in and how many people are actually purchasing homes, which was just from March to April, house sales went down 57%. Not house values, mm. but just the number of sales that yeah. actually took place. Well, I can. Um, I'm the luxury market is that. one that's taking the hardest hit right now mm. because those, those homes are just not moving at all. But. Here's the issue. Um, our national housing agency is the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, uh, and they have come out with um, information that is way worse than what the banks have come out with. All the major banks come really? out with what they're expecting in terms of housing uh, costs, drops, and so on, and the mm -hmm. value of your home and how many people are going to be behind on their mortgages. The CMH A is uh, much more pessimistic. So most of the banks really? say housing okay. prices will drop somewhere between five and eight uh, percent. Not a national housing agency; they say anywhere from nine to eighteen percent. And to put this into perspective, um, the two biggest times in recorded Canadian history, as we've recorded house prices, uh, both the downturns then were only five percent. Hmm. So when you think it could be nine to eighteen percent, that is a substantial drop in the value of your home. Uh, this obviously affects baby boomers a lot because a lot of them need to get the money out of their home to help them retire. Yeah. If your home goes down by 18%, I mean, that is That's a massive, huge. huge hit. Even on a home of 400000 that is still, you know, like about an $85,000 hit to mm -hmm. the value of your home over the next 12 months. And the other thing that they're very concerned about is uh, mortgages in arrears. Right now it's yeah, at 12%. They say by September that number could be as high as 20. So one in five people by September could be behind on their mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. um, and they're saying that you know the banks are gonna have to work together on this, maybe extend people's mortgages out for the months they couldn't pay, yeah, yeah, something yeah, like that, where they add on additional payments. So let's say you can make, pay your mortgage for four months. They just tack on four months to the end of yeah, your mortgage. And instead of you trying to catch up, uh, because um, trying to catch up on your mortgage payment if you're if you're behind by like three or four months, that's a substantial amount of money to almost anyone. Yeah, uh, so much stress on the homeowner themselves too. It is. Too. Like I most mean, people like spend really. between twenty-five and thirty-three percent of their income on housing. If yeah. you have to double that up for four months, that's fifty percent or more of your income every month going to your mortgage for four months. And it's difficult. I mean, with Extremely everything going difficult. on and worrying yeah. about your children and housing and then mm -hmm. to know that you can't cover your mortgage payment and it's just, it piles on, right? It's a mm -hmm. lot. It's a and, lot. and with higher unemployment and people coming back not full time and, and just how we're like reopening is, is causing yeah. problems too. Yeah, so and actually- people's finances. Yeah, they, they are on reduced hours. Right? Is that how they really reopened? Yeah, most of most stores. Yeah, no stores are actually open the amount they were before. That's right. Yeah. So they're, I, I all, they're all working at about yeah. sixty to seventy percent of what they would normally open for because they have to spend so much time cleaning, cleaning, and then also uh, yeah. re-merchandising stores, spacing it out. So yeah. interesting stuff, Chris. Thanks so much. We will be right back after this commercial break with more information. Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify.
Welcome back. Well, we've got some trash talk. <laughs> yes, literally. Yes. <laughs> We're going to do some trash talk. Yes, I talked trash with both uh, <laughs> Luke and Rick yesterday because it is an issue. And we also yeah. talked about the rat problem connected to trash as well. What? Yes. Okay, so well, we heard, I heard mm -hmm. a co-worker talk about this yesterday. Yes. And, and in passing, I said, I turned around and said, what? A what? A what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -mm. There used to be a rat catching program called the abatement program here. Uh, it was canceled by the uh, previous council. Really? I didn't but they actually had that. a program that was out there actually catching all the rats. That program is no longer there. Yeah. Um, they've sort of fix the problem uh, with these big roll-up bins so you can put more garbage out than you could before with the bags. Oh, right, yeah. It's, it's much harder for a rat to, to actually bite through plastic uh, than it is to bite through a garbage bag. I'm, la I have so, I'm laughing, I have to yeah. say this. So when we had the new ones in Southern Ontario, the new trash, tra trash mm -hmm. cans, they actually tested them out with animals to make sure that the rats couldn't open them up and get yeah and then yeah. the raccoons figured out how yes, to, and yes then they ended and up in figuring toronto it out. they had yeah. the latch on it yes and they thought that they had solved the raccoon yeah. problem no raccoons figured it out they like, figured out they the figured latch. out like three minutes True i mean story. literally it the was... first time people were putting these bins out the ra the raccoons were just on top opening them <laughs> up hilarious. it was like they were popping the top of a pop can yeah. or something and then delving right in all that was, work and you just know that they're sitting yeah. in that that room they're manufacturing yeah. something like We've got those We've raccoons. Got it. We've they solved can't. the problem. And then <laughs> no. the raccoon takes three minutes like, yeah, whatever, buddy. <laughs> nice try. Go back to the drawing board. <laughs> it was so funny. The money they must have spent trying oh, different products. Hilarious. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your story there. But, so, but there's yeah. a lot of trash all around uh, uh, the city as well. Particularly in backyards and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people have an entire living room in their backyard that they're not using. Yeah. Uh, and they're just not taking it to the dump to get rid of it. Um, so there, there is those issues. And they've actually hired another bylaw enforcement officer. Oh, wow. Okay, so they're serious. Now so now there's two instead of one. Uh -huh. So they're out there enforcing it more. Okay. Apparently, according to the city stats, it's getting better than it was, particularly with those um, garbage bins make a huge difference. Oh, that's, um, that's crazy. So... Yeah. Well, good times. Good trash times. talk. It is, eh? Yeah. We do have to go to our our hashtag in this together SSM um, video for today, and it's uh, it's about a local business owner and Game Boys. Remember, we we're talking about Game Boys yesterday. This yes, is my guy. Tetris. This is my guy. Model hasn't really changed throughout the pandemic itself. Uh, I'm a home based business, uh, so I do a lot of uh, my sales online itself, and then my clients, uh, I I offer them both pickup and delivery options. Okay. I offer free delivery across the city itself, and then I do also deliver outside of the city itself. Well, that's uh, great. Me, but uh, pretty much the only change that's happened is I do offer the contactless pickup or delivery if they do choose that. Yeah, that's great. Otherwise, I can, uh, do cash, the transfer, visa, debit, uh, pretty much the whole shebang with any of that. But uh, other than that, I mean, mm -hmm. um, I'm open to whatever my customers want, okay. uh, contactless or not. Mm -hmm. um, and happy to serve any needs that they may want. That's great. So tell me and tell everybody, all our viewers, what are some products that you um, that you offer? Let's start with that. And I, I'm, an, I'm interested in knowing what products are the most um, the most popular with your your business. So my primary business itself is the Excite Events Marketing Consulting part, which so I do offer graphic design, website development itself. And then a couple of years ago, I did start selling electronics and gaming accessories. Okay as a compliment to my business so oh nice okay so you originally started with marketing and consulting welcome back the rest of that video can be seen at our youtube page yes which you go to sueonline.com or and click on the algoma marketplace while you're there or go to on tv and click your um your youtube page and yes. that's all, we sh all she wrote for today yeah and uh, we'd like to thank kc securities for sponsoring the show hi to daniel who's watching on our hi, facebook Dan. live channel and we will see you back here at one o'clock. You can check out my interviews with Luke and Rick Nero from the Sault Ste. Marie Council on Facebook and YouTube as well. And I'll see you again tonight at 7 p.m. Have a good morning, Sault Ste. Marie. Happy Thursday.